Here's a, an exercise to uh, strengthen your lower back. And I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, trying to isolate muscles to, to learn how to feel them and engage them when you want to. And also to, to get the maximum amount of uh, stimulation to that muscle and not other muscles. So a lot of you probably have done some reverse hypers or hyperextensions. And those are good, but there's a... There's an overlapping system of the low back muscles, the glute muscles, and the hamstrings. And the low back muscles go from point A to point B. But the glute muscles then overlap point B of the, of the low back muscles. And they go from point A to point B, but there's an overlap. And then the hamstrings, this would be the glutes again, point A to point B, which overlapped the low back muscles, and then the hamstrings, they overlap as well. They start above the bottom of the, of the glutes, and they go down. And so there's this, this, this hopscotching, uh, leapfrogging, overlapping. It's a great system for, for strength and, and for stability, and that's why it's, it, it's that like that, but it's hard to isolate any of those muscles um, independently. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to get just the low back muscles to work. We don't want the glutes and we don't want the hamstrings. When you do a traditional reverse hyper or even a hyperextension, you get a little bit of glute, a little bit of hamstring, a little bit of low back, and you really have to think really hard to try to separate any of those out. Uh, if you, if you, if you uh, try some of these, um, you can really get an enormous amount of just low back work. So you could do this on a reverse hyper or any sort of hyper setup. You can actually just lay a, a board across a, a power rack and do these. And what we're going to try to do, step back for just a second. I'll try to illustrate this with my hands and then uh, it'll, it'll be easier for you to see. What's going to happen here is we're going to lay across here and we're going to hold on and steady our upper body. So nothing happens on the upper body. Everything happens down in the hips and low back. And what the hips are going to do is you're going to you're going to allow the low back muscles that run uh, from your pelvis up to your spine, you're going to allow those to lengthen. And when they lengthen, they're going to let the the pelvic girdle rotate off of this edge. And they're going to hang. And you'll see them the the low back muscles stretch out. And then all you're going to do is contract the low back muscles. You're not going to contract the glutes. You're not going to lift the legs or, or, or uh, swing the legs or contract the, the hamstrings. All you're going to do is make a lengthening and stretching and shortening of the two Coke bottle <laughs> the, the muscles at your lower back, the two strips of muscle uh, right across your lower back that, that, that are going to they're going to flex. They're going to lengthen and they're going to allow the pelvis to stretch and then they're going to shorten and the pelvis may like creep up onto the bench a little bit or not. But what I want you to really see is, and I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate it with my hands, the lengthening and the shortening of just the low back muscles. So hop up here and let's give it a try. So she has to stabilize with something. I like to hold my clients down a little bit too when, when we do this. So first things first, we have to let the, the pelvis and everything stretch out. So let's, let's let this stretch the low back out. And the, what's going to happen is she's just going to contract the low back muscles, these two strips of muscle right here. So contract those and leave the legs hang. Leave them down there. They don't do nothing. Hamstrings don't do nothing. Glutes don't do nothing. And now these muscles are hard as rocks. Contract, now stretch. So I'm putting my hand at the top of her sacrum and, and the, the end of her low back and go ahead and contract and watch my hands come together. Now the muscles are short. They've contracted. Now let them stretch. Look at the distance. I'm just keeping my hands right still. She's making them bring them together. She's making my hands come closer and then relax and further. And so watch what's happening here. Nothing happens down here. This stays nice and tight and firm. I'll help support you. Go ahead and pull your low back in, contract it, and then relax it. Contract it. Good. Relax it and rest. 
Now you got to have some abdominal strength to go ahead and relax. Get up. Don't get up too soon. Easy does it. Easy does it. And hold on for a second too. Um, you got to kind of keep your abs tight and you got to have some, some tolerance to, to, to something hitting your, your belly. But the, the idea here is that we're trying to keep that isolated in those, just those low back muscles. Let's do one wrong. Is everything running on there, Tom? Uh, let's, let's do one where we do it wrong, where we lift and lower. Yeah, okay. go ahead, and, go ahead and, and engage some of your glutes and do this exercise. And this isn't bad or horrible, but it's not what we want here. We're trying to do something different here. So if you just do a, a reverse hyper, you get some of this, but then you also engage these. And that's okay, but oftentimes we don't get enough of this. And all we get, we leave this kind of long and just kick your legs up. Yeah, we don't get any of this shortening. This kind of stays long on the reverse hyper and it doesn't get enough attention. So go ahead and rest, that's fine. Um, so this is a version of a reverse hyper without weight. Uh, you, can, you can easily add some weight to it, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really help that much. This is more of an isometric uh, exercise to tune into just your low back muscles. And I would say if you could get up to five sets of 15 of this, that's about as far as you can go with this particular exercise. But by doing that, you're really gonna be able to use this exercise to make your reverse hypers more effective because you're gonna really start to engage the, 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 the spinal erector muscles at the bottom of your low back. So I, I would try some of these to, to feel what they can do for you. And then with the idea of when you get enough endurance built up in them, uh, you can go back to your uh, reverse hypers and get a lot more out of them because you'll be thinking about and because you felt those spinal erectors working, 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 and you'll engage those more in, in when you do a, a, a weighted uh, reverse hyper on, on the machine. So these, these can be very, very helpful to get you in tune with what you should be getting a lot of from the reverse hypers. So this is sort of a supplemental exercise, uh, sort of a, a ramp up exercise. I never do these with any weight. You can, you can put weight on the, I just don't think they're very effective. Uh, I use them to, to tune somebody into the low back muscles so that then we can go to the reverse hyper and get much more out of it. So there you have it. That's, a, that's an idea for you to think about putting into your program. Certainly try some of these and feel how uh, they, they, they pump up your low back like, uh, like nothing else does. If you think you've got a really good low back pump, um, you probably have, but try these and compare the pump that you get from these uh, to, to the best pump you ever had on your low back. So I hope you try them and I hope they, they help you out. Uh, so thank you for listening.